Welcome to the Halloween edition of the NT Prep Preview. We decided not to wear costumes because we figured our faces were scary enough this week. This week we'll discuss the first week of uh, prep football playoffs, also volleyball and cross country postseasons. Uh, let's break down the five playoff games this week. Well, the first thing we'll talk about is St. B. They lost last Friday against Sherrard. A lot of people thought they were out of the playoffs. Well, they barely snuck in. They were the 255th team uh, for qualifier out of the 256 teams that made the postseason. They traveled to Winnebago at 7 o'clock on Friday. That may be a scary opponent for most teams, but St. Pete definitely thinks that it can win and pull the upset. We also have uh, Sterling Newman traveling to Fieldcrest. It's a matchup of 8-1 and one team. It's not common that you see an 8-1 team like Newman go on the road to Fieldcrest like they were. The, uh, the Knights are still trying to win their first ever postseason game. It's a tough draw for them, but if they can do it, it says a lot about the program and how far they've come. Uh, the 6-3 and three River Valley Falcons have made the playoffs for the first time in school history, which is pretty awesome. They drew the 7-2 uh, and two Erie Prophets down. Uh, they both used to play each other in the Big Rivers Conference, so they know each other a little bit, and uh, it should be a good game. We also have uh, Hall making it back to the playoffs for the first time since 2008. Uh, they're 6-3, and three, so they got in automatically, and they will be heading all the way to Bismarck Henning, which is about 2 hours and 45 minutes from Spring Valley. It's basically Indiana. Yeah, it's quite the hike for the Red Devils. Uh, they're facing a 9-0 team in Bismarck Henning, uh, but they are the smallest team in Class 2A. They used to be 1A, and they, they barely got bumped up to, to 2A, so we'll see how the Red Devils handle that. And we also have Marquette, 9 and 0, playing host to Milford, who's 5 and 4, and they're they're taking a trip. It's about 2 hours and 20 minutes from Milford to Ottawa. That game's on 7 o'clock Friday night. Um, you would think Marquette would have a, a good chance to win that one and advance the second round for the second year in a row. Also in postseason is volleyball, which is in the regionals. Yeah, we have a lot of area teams that have a lot of area regionals. Uh, LP and Mendota and Princeton are all at the Class 3A Streeter Regional. So you'd hope that one of our teams were able to win that regional. At Hall, we still have a couple of teams left. Uh, Fieldcrest is the number one seed in that regional. Putnam County is the three seed. And we're taping this on Tuesday, so St. Beat is still alive. Um, it's the number five seed. But you also have schools like Bureau Valley, who's the number one seed at Riverdale. And we also have some other teams who um, with the two or three seeds, maybe even the four seeds at their regionals, they can maybe pull an upset and get to the regional title game. But hopefully it'll be a good postseason. Like I said, LP is probably the best team in our area, and we think that they could at least get to the regional, maybe through the sectional, and get to the super sectional maybe farther. Okay. And then also in the postseason is cross country, which is now in the sectionals. Yeah, a lot of cross country runners advance out of the regional. Uh, Not that it's that seven. hard. Well, yeah, the top seven teams uh, advance, and then the next five individuals. We did have several regional champions in the area. Um, Leslie Roker from LaSalle, Peru, Maria Baldwin from Fieldcrest, and Al Baldwin from Hall all won their individual titles. And the Henry Midland girls, uh, after getting seventh last year, they, they had a disqualification with all two girls because they held hands across the finish line, and that's against the rules. Uh, they did not win the regional title last year. They came back this year, and they won it. So the Lady, Mal Lady Timber Ducks, excuse me, are regional champions once again. Uh, and we have several, you know, teams and uh, individuals who should be looking at maybe going to state after this weekend's section. Maybe they wait until after they cross the finish line to hold hands and celebrate <laughs> this year. That might be a good idea. Now it's time for the best segment in all the land, the News Tribune Prep Preview Powerhouse Players of the Week. Well guys, our first powerhouse player of the week is somebody who's actually already been on this a couple of times. It's Fieldcrest sophomore quarterback, Drew Barth. He threw, or he had six touchdowns total in the game and had a 399 yards of total offense. It's at least the second time this season he's had six TDs, which is quite a bit, especially for a high school kid. That might be a few more touchdowns than some of our area teams had this whole season. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving on, we are going to the cross country course. I already mentioned her, Leslie Roker from LaSalle, Peru, printed 1926 to win the Cree Moni individual title. And with my pick, I'm going back to the volleyball court with Mackenzie Rombach from Ottawa, who had 19 kills in a regional quarterfinal win. Thank you for watching this week, and make sure to come back next week at www.newstrip.com. Backslash sports. <laughs>
Giants, and hopefully one of those teams can can get to the Legends of the Ascent. Never mind. You're the one that's making me redo this stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me ten dollars instead of fifteen. Okay. Boo. <laughs> no enthusiasm. No enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week, and make sure to come back next week at www. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna do the salute now since he didn't let me do it earlier. The salute. Oh, I didn't introduce nobody.